Aggregate Planning, Chapter 13. The goal of this session is for you to understand the planning process and its various elements, including sales, operations, and aggregate planning. We will finish with a graphical plan and a revenue management problem. Each discipline has different goals for planning. Operations seeks production and inventory plans. Marketing deals with demand management and variability. Finance is concerned with cash flow and revenue resulting from the overall operation. The planning process is divided between long range, intermediate range, and short range plans. Each has its own unique elements. Longer range plans generally affect larger investments and as a result involve higher level managers. For example, a major facility expansion would be part of the long range planning process and require higher levels of approval. This flow diagram shows the linkage between the various planning ranges and plans. All planning is based upon the overall organization strategy, which drives the business plan. The marketing, operations, and financial plans are then created, leading to the aggregate plan, which guides the service and manufacturing operations. Typical inputs and outputs to the planning process are shown here. Forecasts and constraints define the plan, which creates staffing, production, inventory, and budget plans for the operation. Sales and operations planning links external demand with internal capability. Plans affect the entire supply chain. The goal is to determine feasibility, limitations, and control limits. The end result would be the aggregate plan. This diagram shows the various elements leading up to the aggregate plan. Note the various chapters from the text associated with these actions. As stated earlier, planning must be an expression of the high-level strategy for the entire organization. Sales and operations planning includes the creation of the plan along with coordination of the plan with the various members of the supply chain. Aggregate plans are typically based upon units, quantities, and dollars. A standard time frame and methodology are used to produce repeatable results for comparison. This plan is then used to assist managers making operational decisions. In general, the goal of aggregate planning is to fulfill all demand while minimizing cost. If meeting demand is not a goal, costs may be minimized by doing nothing. Clearly not a good business strategy. At Frito-Lay, for example, aggregate planning must include three dozen brands with a planning horizon of 3 to 18 months. Production facilities are highly automated with high fixed costs. Inputs include historical sales, current demand forecast, capacity improvements, and sales promotions. Once shared with 36 plants, each plant creates a local four-week plan for production. In another example for snapper lawn mowers, aggregate plans cover 145 models over nine months. Notice that this is a summarized plan with monthly forecasts. The aggregate plan, as the name suggests, is a summarized plan. Operations managers must disaggregate the plan to define specific product plans to create master production schedules for each plant. Different strategies may be used to match production capacity to demand. These include inventory, a flexible workforce, and price changes to influence customer demand. The first option, changing inventory levels, is commonly used to ensure product availability. Excess inventory can result in increased material costs, storage requirements, and capital investment. Low inventory often leads to lost sales due to long lead times and poor product availability. While not affecting capital costs, labor is often your largest expense. To cover changes in demand, employees must be hired or cut from the workforce. Hiring and training costs for new employees are high and may lead to lower productivity and reduced quality. Laying off employees can affect the morale of those remaining and build a poor reputation for the company. Staffing changes should generally be considered for long-term changes in demand. A shorter-term solution for staffing might include working overtime when demand increases 
are more manageable. Adding idle time may be used for reduced demand. Rather than waste idle time, employees could engage in preventative maintenance, inventory cycle counts, or training. Many companies plan ahead by having pre-planned training modules available. Part-time workers may be added in the short term to cover jobs requiring minimal training. Work may also be subcontracted to an external source, but may be costly and have lower quality standards. You may also create a competitor by training a third party to manufacture your product. On the demand side, steps can be taken to manage customer needs to more closely align with operational capacity. Advertising may be used to increase demand during slow periods, while demand may be shifted to slow periods when capacity is exceeded. For example, restaurants are often slow early in the week, so they offer discounts for coming in during those times. Another approach is through back ordering. Customer orders are taken for delivery at a later date, when demand is more manageable. This approach may result in lost sales, especially when demand is time sensitive. Finally, a manufacturer of products sold mostly during one season may diversify to add other products common during a different season. Think landscaping versus snow removal services. This table summarizes the aggregate planning options described. Here inventory and workforce options are described. The aggregate planning options table continues with the options of varying production rates and adding subcontracting. Here the table considers the use of part-time workers and influencing demand. Finally, the aggregate planning options table considers back ordering during high demand periods and counter seasonal product and service mixing. Think bicycles and snowboards. While we have looked at the planning options individually, a mix of strategies may be the optimum. We may hire additional employees to address a long-term increase in demand while adding part-time employees or using overtime in the short term. The best plan may vary over time as business conditions change. One mixed approach is the chase strategy. We match the average demand with capacity and address short-term variation using other methods. This is common with service organizations. Think of a restaurant asking employees to work extra hours during a busy weekend. Another approach is the level strategy, where production is pre-planned and uniform. This method is best for production management since loading is defined in advance and there are no emergencies. This approach may affect customers if demand fluctuates. Toyota typically uses a level strategy for building automobiles. In general, you do not order a new Toyota. You pick one out of the predefined pipeline of vehicles that has not already been spoken for. Graphical methods may be used to assist with aggregate planning. While simplistic, these methods are easy to use and readily communicated. This may not result in an optimum approach, but with experience will generate a satisfactory result. To make use of graphical methods, these are the steps used. Demand and existing capacity are determined. The capacity management options and associated costs are identified. In alignment with the corporate culture, alternative plans are suggested and compared by cost. In this example, we see that the average demand is 50 units per day. Note that demand on some days is less and on some days is more than the average. This chart depicts the data graphically. The days when demand is less and more are clearly identified. On those days, steps must be taken to close the gap. The previous options and others should be considered. Now for a second example, we see the data associated with a second roofing supplier. The assumption is that we have a constant workforce during the time under review. Carrying costs, pay rates, labor requirements, and the costs of increasing or decreasing capacity are shown. With this level of information, we can more effectively align capacity with demand. For this example, we now review the production capacity versus the customer demand. When capacity exceeds demand, inventory increases. When demand exceeds capacity, inventory goes down. The table shows the running inventory over time. With a goal of 50 units per day, 
10 workers are required. The total inventory carried over from one month to the next totaled 1,850 units. Based upon this analysis, the next step is to calculate the costs. First we calculate the inventory carrying cost at $5 per unit. Then we calculate our labor costs for 10 workers at $80 per day over 124 days. Based upon these calculations, we find a total cost of $108,450. This graph shows the results of this analysis. Note that the inventory increases until April and then decreases to zero in June. Now we take a look at the situation except that for this round we include the possible use of a subcontractor. We have reduced the number of full-time employees to cover the demand at the low end and then use subcontractors to cover excess demand. Referring to the data on slide 34, we calculate the internal cost and the subcontracting cost. The internal team of 7.6 workers can produce 38 units per day for a total of 4,712 units over the 124 days. The remaining 1,488 units come from the subcontractor at $20 per unit for a total cost of $29,760. With the cost of the internal labor, the total cost of production is $105,152. This graph shows the results when allowing the use of subcontractors. You'll notice that the number of internal workers is set to provide product to cover the lowest demand over the time frame. All capacity above the dashed line is provided by subcontractors. The third scenario represents the same data while allowing hiring and layoffs to provide the level of staffing required. The fifth column includes the extra cost of hiring additional employees, while the sixth column includes the extra cost of layoffs. In addition to the extra costs, this plan would be very disruptive to the workforce. This graph shows the effect of having demand covered by regular employees. The number of employees exactly matches the need to cover the variable demand. Hiring and layoffs are necessary to follow the demand. In summary, reviewing the three scenarios, we find that Plan 2, using subcontractors, meets the customer demand with the lowest cost. As noted earlier, this is the goal of aggregate planning. Other approaches include the transportation method of linear programming, which produces an optimal plan but does not work with nonlinear models. Other methods include general linear programming and simulations, like the simulation used for class. Aggregate planning may also be applied to service based businesses. For services, since minimal inventory is typically involved, labor costs are the primary concern. Typical strategies include accurate scheduling and worker flexibility regarding hours and job skills.